Welcome to our worship from Seal Church, led by me, Canon Anne Labar. The hymn which ends the service is sung by the choristers of St Martin in the Fields. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we make our confession to God and hear his words of forgiveness. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King, keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 34, beginning at verse 11. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The Gospel reading is from Matthew 25, beginning at verse 31. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, 
Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick and in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The part of Matthew's Gospel which includes today's reading also has messages about what happens when we fail to prepare, contrasted with those who are ready when the time comes. There are the foolish bridesmaids who had no oil for their lamps, which they carried to meet the bridegroom and missed out on their opportunity, unlike those who carried flasks of oil with them. Then last week, there were the slaves given talents by their master. One of the three failed to put his to work and was cast out as a result. And there's some relevance when you think about the talent, the money, to today's reading as well. How can we ever help others if we take what we're given, yet leave it buried to the extent that it remains dormant? Helping others sometimes involves taking risks and being ready for uncertain outcomes. Today we hear of sheep and goats, and it's about being prepared to use our understanding of who God is to his glory. Jesus' words could be taken as a provocation to take economics and politics seriously, because when their power is in the wrong hands, the effects on millions of people can be devastating. There's a message that it's simply not acceptable to ignore those in need, poverty, oppression or sickness. To to do so makes us unrecognisable as Christians. The way we organise society is at the heart of Jesus' message and nothing could be further from God's kingdom than disregard for our most vulnerable members of society. You won't need me to give specific references about places where war rages and environmental disasters cause terrible suffering. But the depressing thing is that they have one thing in common, and that is that the old, the sick, the children, the poorest, it's them who are disproportionately effective, affected by a massive margin. Anyone who's ever been hiking on the Brecon Beacons can relate to the reading from Ezekiel of the clouds and the thick darkness where scattered sheep are wandering, even though it's actually the mountains of Israel to which he refers. Ezekiel tells us that the God we worship is one who longs to rescue lost sheep and bring them to safety and peace. But it also tells of his displeasure with the strong who deliberately deprive those in need, who keep taking more than they need, even though they can see the cost to others around them. 
When all this is considered, it's hard not to reflect on the way in which we live as individuals. We hear from the prophet that God is on the side of the sheep who are pushed away from their share by the fat and the strong, that he seeks to bring healing to the victims, the oppressed who have suffered due to the greed of others, restoring body, mind and spirit. How we can help those in need can be both easy but also at times quite complex. On one level we can respond to many good charities giving our time and or money. We truly would have to walk around with our eyes closed to be unaware that there are many in need of help. Perhaps we are the generation least able to say, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or in need? As pictures of events both in our own country and around the world are beamed into our homes but also into tiny little screens in our pockets at times. It's a hard-hitting message that we heard in today's gospel that doing nothing is not an option for a Christian and it must be a common occurrence for many of us to feel that our little bit of help won't actually change much but using this as an excuse to do nothing is simply not acceptable. We can't help everyone, but we must help someone. It's not salvation by works, but an overcoming of barriers which obstruct our recognition of Christ in each other. Recognition that Jesus is not some distant deity, but the suffering, unjustly treated, victimised and ultimately crucified human being. God has chosen a human whose life begins as a refugee and ends as a convicted criminal. All to illustrate to us what kingship looks like. Some people may be watching the popular TV drama series, The Crown, and will be aware that the section relating to the tragic death of Diana, the Princess of Wales, is currently being aired. Those who were around at the time will recall how the Queen remained aloof, stiff up at lip and all that, until the pressure for her to show her love and emotion to the people became irresistible. The British people were clear that they wanted a monarch who would be alongside them, empathise with them and share in their sad times as well as the good times. A hint as to what people feel a worthy king or queen really looks like. Jesus is telling us that in caring for the poor, the sick, the imprisoned, we are serving God. It's so easy to see in our own society how systems conspire against those who are least able. Lord Bird, founder of The Big Issue, pointed out how, how expensive it is to be poor in Britain at the moment. For example, if you live in social or other rented housing, and you're a good tenant and pay your rent on time for many years, this is not recognised for a credit rating. Yet those who pay their mortgage on time build up a positive credit history, a digital identity and access to credit on the best terms available, rather than being forced to resort to loan sharks. Jesus' message probably feels many of us, leaves many of us feeling guilty because we know in our hearts that we could do more, yet we're unlikely to ever feel that we do enough. Whilst some people seem to have an incredible caring capacity, many people with busy lives struggle to bring focus to what they should really do to make a difference. A lot of the commentaries I read on today's gospel make it sound like serving those Jesus describes is an easy, almost cosy thing to do that leaves both sides with a nice warm feeling. Whilst the reality is often quite different. 
I've been inside Belmarsh Prison in Thamesmead as a visitor, and some of the people there are actually quite scary, and it wouldn't be easy to spend time with them. I've tried to help someone coming out of prison, he shoved it back in my face. I've lent money to people who are in financial difficulty, and they've neither thanked me nor paid me back. I visited the sick in hospital and had to leave them at times to go and throw up. Quite frankly, I can see why sheep are used in the story, because they often seem so much more straightforward than people. Fluffy animals wandering in the hills, buying and pooping without all the complexities for evil and all the infuriating behaviour of so many human beings. It can often be hard to see Christ the King in the face of those we try to help. Yet we must persist, even if it means finding new ways to serve each other, which are more sustainable for us personally. Often ways which play to our strengths, use our skills, or let us employ our influence or wealth. Earlier in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus had already warned his disciples about dark days ahead, false prophets, and many losing faith. So challenging circumstances were not unusual. Let's be honest, if you were looking at humanity at this point in time, would you want the job of being their king? What an impossible bunch of people we can be never happy for more than five minutes with the leaders we choose, all pulling in so many different directions. It's no wonder that we can be like scattered and lost sheep at times. Yet, as we celebrate Christ the King today, if we understand our role as subjects in his kingdom, the vision that Jesus wants us to work towards becomes clearer. By playing our part in it, we become just a little more Christ-like. At times, I'm sure many of us have had people send us messages or come and tell us how much we've helped them at some point in time. Much to our surprise. We were probably all just being our normal selves, reacting in a compassionate way that seemed natural at a time when somebody else was not finding this reaction elsewhere or had a great need to hear what we were able to say. When we're open to the influence of Christ, we may be changed without being fully aware how, and in our ordinary actions of life, God can really see what we're made of. It's often the small acts of grace and kindness made on a daily basis that define who we really are. The final thought. We know that God doesn't want us to carry around our regrets and shortcomings until they become such a burden that we can no longer move forward. He wants our life in Christ to be liberating. So rather than beating ourselves up for our shortcomings, let's acknowledge them before God and leave them with him. And move forward to serve each other as we are able. Amen. And so as we bring our prayers to God, we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.